dear Biafrans and progressive Nigerians, I welcome you to this historic January 15th broadcast. On behalf of all those who carried out the January 15th revolution in 1966, I bring to you a message of truth and freedom, for it is only the truth that can set us free from the bondages of war and propaganda, which we confuse as history. My name is Colonel Emmanuel Mwara Mwobosi. I am 80 years old. It is time to be bold. I am too old to lie. I am not afraid to die. It is time to tell you why we had to try. I am the last of the original coup platters of January 15, 1966 with Major Chukwu Makaduna Nzogo. I knew Nzogo well. We went to school together. We trained together. We trained at Sandhurst Military Academy, UK. We lived together. Nzogo was our first head of military intelligence and uncovered terrible plans to wreak havoc across the country. We organized a group of progressive military officers to carry out a coup on 15 January 1966 to stop a jihad and bring sanity to Nigeria, steeped in nepotism, corruption and mass murders. The government of Tafawa Balewa, controlled by the Premier of Northern Nigeria, Amadou Bello, were using us in the army to repress the Middle Belt and Western Nigeria. Houses and cars were burnt, thousands were killed, there were nine of us that planned the January 15th revolution. Majors Nzogu, Anuforo, Ifa Juna, Ademoyega, Chukuka, Okafo, Onwa Chogu, and Obienu, and myself. However, four of us started it. Major Ifa Juna and Major Ademoyega in the south, and Major Nzogu and myself in the north. We then united as a single revolution. I am the last of the four original revolutionaries. None published the complete truth. Only me, Colonel Emmanuel Mwobosi, is alive today to tell the final truth so that the lies will not triumph forever. They used us to repress the Middle Belt and the Yorubas. When we saw genocide, we began to disobey orders and swore to stop them. For instance, Major Chris Anoforo refused to release mass murderers caught with weapons and was caught martialed. He was replaced by Major Hassan Katsina, a northern Muslim willing to act. I was in Abiyokuta but refused to repress Yorubas. Instead, I opened our barracks as a safe place for them to run to. They told many lies about the January 15 boys to justify their genocide. But it is those of us that planned the revolution that they should have killed, not the three million innocent Biafrans that knew nothing. For years, I kept quiet, blaming myself and wondering whether at 27 I was too radical that my actions led to the death of millions. Today, the same evil in 1966 is being unleashed. As I watch, my sense of guilt has vanished because we were not the evil. We were trying to stop the evil. That evil is radical Islamism. I have decided to speak out and warn the world of the impending disaster if we do not stop it. Each time radical Muslims plan a jihad, 
in their religious mission to conquer the world, they would fail. But in the attempt, thousands and even millions will die. That happened to us in Biafra. At this point, let me differentiate between peaceful, law-abiding Muslims and radical Muslims who want to kill others, to force their religion on them. The problem is that wherever peaceful Muslims are, there are some radical Muslims amongst them. That is why they began a jihad in 1966. That is why we had to stop it. That is why they killed millions of our people. That is why we declared Biafra. Because we are a peaceful people and oil and water can never mix. My story is a warning to Nigerians. For years I was prevented from speaking the truth by exile, prison, harassment, poverty, surveillance, and death threats held over many of the actors like Ojuku, Zik, Awolowo, Ibian, and the January 15 boys that survived. But as I watch today, many of the events that led to the revolution are happening again, like Boko Haram, Fulani militia, Niger Delta militants, Shiites, IPOB, and mass murders. Some people think we acted wrongly in carrying out the January 15th revolution, but they may not be fully aware of the re uh, realities then. We were trained by the British to be patriotic, to give the ultimate sacrifice for Nigeria and to stop anyone acting against the nation. Instead of our leaders using us to defend Nigeria, they were using us to suppress the citizens. We decided to arrest them for their atrocities because no one was willing to act. Not Zeke, the president, who was powerless, not Irunsi, the head of state of the army, who was a conservative. There were many reasons why we had to act. One, to stop the killings in Yoruba land and the Middle Belt by NPC, the ruling party. Two, to stop the invasion of Yoruba land on 17 January 1966. Three, to correct the massive rigging of the 1964 elections. Four, to free Awolowo from prison and make him the Prime Minister. Five, to stop the terrible corruption, nepotism and regionalism of the NPC, the ruling party. Five, to stop Amadou Bello's planned jihad. It was good that we acted to save the Yoruba and the Middle Belt people. And we thought that was enough to stop the Jihad. We could not foresee that they would massively attack innocent Igbos. Blame those who decided to massacre our people for their evil. Today, we are fighting Buhari. He is killing Shiite Muslims and IPOB members. With the benefit of hindsight, we can see other ways of dealing with such evil. But for us in 1966, we just wanted to save the people from massacre. I wish to congratulate Namdi Kano and IPOB for the good work they are doing to free our people from Nigeria and radical Islamism. Many of our people do not understand how vast IPOB is as an organization 
and the quality of the people that run it. On arrival in Israel, I started meeting high quality professionals and I was amazed. I don't know how IPOB United power professionals abroad, power traders at home, and ordinary people from market women to even Riff Raff, all under one IPOP family with worldwide radio and television. Every Igbo and Biafran should be proud of them. They are the strongest force we have today to achieve freedom for all Nigerians. No wonder they can take on the Nigerian government and win. However, it is money that makes things work. I shall donate 10% of all the profits of my new book to IPOP. It is my tight to freedom. Titan is God's tax to raise money for the government of the children of God. I urge you all to regularly do the same so we can have the resources to achieve our objectives. On this day of 15th January 2019, the anniversary of our revolution, I want to hand over to Nambekano and IPOB the baton of the January 15 boys to you to complete the revolution we started. I am Ogene Obosi, a chief and elder of the Obosi people. I bring to you the blessings of the ancients. I fought for Biafra. I was wounded for Biafra. I shall die for Biafra. He said... Uh, 